This is Lister Kelt um, Ring Fort in Derry Newson, County Armagh. And this is the back gate to it. We have some company. These young bullocks ran across the field to greet us and they've been talking to them for about 10 minutes. Now inside the ring fort is the old 6th century probably Lystra Kelt monastery an old church set up by St Maka All the stones, as far as I know, represent graves. There's the ruins of the old, I think it's an old 17th century church that was built here. That seems to be the only wall Part of all this rain, there's probably some under, under that undergrowth. But you can see from the ground, you can see roughly the shape of the church. We've been looking for dates on these stones, but it's very difficult to find dates. Because they're so old and many of the stones don't have dates. There are also a lot of slabs where graves have been and some of them look as if they're about to, to actually cave in. It's quite a big ring for it and it's very round. This is one of the only graves we can make out the date on. I'll zoom in for you. I don't know if you can see. But there's one date there that seems to read 1739. Died September 1739, aged what looks like 45. And the bottom one seems to be it was 1750, 1759, I think. Don't know if you can make that out or not. Now, as you can see, that seems to be part of an old wall of the church that's been overgrown. You've got to be very careful here because there's stones marking graves everywhere. And I read up about this place before I came to it. And apparently the Derry Noose Cursing Stone is buried here. The Cursing Stone was, it was said to be unlucky. Yesterday we did go looking for a, another stone about a mile away from here at Karna, at Karna Forest Park, which was brought in over 200 years ago by a local farmer because of the Derry News Cushion, Cushion Stone, and it was thought to bring good luck and ward off evil from the Derry News Cushion Stone. But it did sit somewhere else in Derry Noose, I read the Cushion Stone, and it was brought to this location and buried here to try and hide um, its dark powers. Now down here, that's the other entrance to the old graveyard. Down here there's, some, there's a board with some information. Here we go. I'll get someone to read that for me. Derry Noose Old Graveyard. 
Lystrakelt, St. Mocha. The ground remains of the site suggest a rectangular plan with areas of tumble to the northeast. Above ground remains consist of a pillar of masonry at the north end of the northwest wall. A substantial portion of the lower sections of the southeast wall and numerous headstones, etc., in the graveyard to the south and east. The pillar is a portion of stone measuring 18 foot high by 6 foot wide by 3 foot thick. The east wall is some 40 foot long and ranges from 5 to 8 foot high and 3 foot thick. Both the wall and the pillar are well built of assorted rubble stone and a gritty lime mortar. There's an extract here from J.B. Leslie, 1911, that says, In 1430 there appears connection to the Chaldees as Primate Swain attempted to enforce a better stipend for the vicar from the Chaldees who also owned the rectory. At the dissolution of the Chaldean Priory, the Advalsen fell to the crown, but was granted to the see on or before 1634. In 1622, it was reported, church new built with rector resident. In 1701, Archbishop King endeavoured to get the parishioners to build a new church and pay £30 to a curate. They did not cooperate and the old church lay in ruins. A new church was built at Madden in 1709. St Mocha's Holy Well, the Blessed Well. Situated on the boundary of Lystrakelt and Drumland, towards Drumland Townlands, 40 metres to the north of the graveyard, it is located in a secluded spot and lies in a horseshoe-shaped dry stone surround constructed in 1936. The well is much frequented and venerated by the sick, particularly those with eye ailments. Although the custom lapsed in the 19th century, it has been very much revived in recent times. It is dedicated to Saint Mocha and the slate inscribed slab at the roadside is a more recent refurbishment. According to legend, Saint Mocha, a 6th century saint, was undecided where to build a church in this area. The tongue fell out of his bell at Lystrakelt, which he took as a sign to build his church here. Just outside the graveyard is the hill down past the Stations of the Cross and just across the road from that is St Mocha's Holy Well. I'll walk down there. Quite a busy road. The cross to the to the holy well. But these are the stations of the cross. That's 13. That's 14. There seems to be a sculpture in the middle. These are the other stations of the cross coming down. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. And across the road is St. Mocha's Holy Well. And in the middle, which 
I haven't been across the sea yet. Looks like a sculpture of three acorns. And it seems to be a map of all of the Derry Nose Townlands. I can hear some of our friends that we met earlier on. And if we walk across the road, it seems to be a lot further than 40 yards. I'm trying to think, could Johnny Sexton kick? A rugby ball that far because I know he he can kick over 40 yards, but that looks a little a meters 40 meters, it looks a little bit further. And across the road, which I've got to be careful, is the holy well. There's the water. We got some water earlier. It looks, it looks quite muggy, but when you get, when you take water out of it, it looks very clear. Litter, please. And there's lots of little, little relics, rags, notices, prayers. Even a picture of St. Maka, though, it's probably not St. Maka because he lived 1500 years ago. And they didn't have cameras then. And there's a little walkway up and around it. And the sign says be careful because it can be slippery. But. Today it's not wet, lucky enough, which means it's not slippery. There's even a trailer road there. Though I can't see a toilet. And there are lots of bees, which is probably a good thing. Go. Another pair over here. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed.